Selecting data can speed up your queries. Hello everyone and welcome back. In this episode, we're going to go over lazy loading with query options. And so lazy loading is basically just reducing the amount of data that is loaded unless you need to access it. And so we'll just go over the basic of our models file here. We have our basic setup here at the top. And then we have our base class that we're inheriting all of our models from. Then we have a users table that has a name and a one to many relationship to the post table. And then the post table that has an active status, user ID, and a one to one relationship to the details table. And then the detail table with a content and a post ID. And all of these do have the double underscore rep or double underscore just to make it easier to see in the terminal. So we go ahead and create all the tables and add some test data in here to play with. So let's get started. And so sometimes you might want to enforce lazy loading even if your relationship is set to eagerly load. And that's where the lazy load comes in. The lazy load function explicitly specifies that a given relationship should be loaded lazily. It can be used to override a relationship's default loading strategy or ensure lazy loading is used for specific queries. This is equivalent to lazy equals select on the relationship. And we can do that by having this lazy load function here. So we'll go ahead and run this. And we can see that the queries being performed are the same. Since this user.post relationship is already set to select, this essentially does nothing. But if you had the lazy set to joined or select in or something else, this would make it to select just for this query. And this next one isn't technically a lazy loading strategy, but it can be used to specify a relationship should not be loaded at all, even if you try to access it. And this can be useful for performance optimizations when you know the related data will not be needed. Well, we can do that by specifying this no load function on the related data. And we go ahead and run this. And we can see that the queries are still the same here. But here we've modified this to get the first entry and then print out the post of that user for both of these queries. And we go ahead and run this again. We can see it does the query to get the first user. And then once we try to access this post variable right here, it performs another select statement to get all the posts for that user. And then goes ahead and prints it out right here. But for the second one, it will perform a query to get the user, but it does not do anything when we try to access this post, printing an empty list. So the next one we'll get into is raise load. Raise load forces an error to be raised if a specified relationship is accessed without being loaded. This is helpful for identifying performance issues related to unintended lazy loading. And this is equivalent to lazy equals raise on the relationship. And we can do that here by changing this to raise load. And if we go ahead and try running the same thing again, we can see there was an error being raised, invalid request error, because user.post is not available due to lazy equals raise. And one useful thing you can do with this is instead of user.posts, you can also raise an error if anything is being loaded lazily by only passing this string asterisk into the function. If we go ahead and run this again, it does produce the same output. But if we had something else that was being lazily loaded, like another relationship in this query, and we tried to access it, then it would also throw this error. You can actually pass this string asterisk into each of the different functions we've covered over this video, and it will apply these loading techniques to all related entities in the query. You can stack multiple lazy loading techniques just by adding a comma after your first one and then adding a second one. So let's say that the user did have a preference relationship, we can then lazy load that one too. You can also use eager and lazy loading at the same time. So let's say we wanted to lazy load the posts for our user, but we wanted to join load the preferences for the user if our table had a preferences relationship. We can do that just fine, just like this. If you want to chain multiple loading techniques on top of each other, we can just do the first one of whatever the relationship is. So in this case, user.posts. Then we can do dot and then whatever other loading technique we want to do. So in this case, I'm doing a lazy load on the detail from the posts. If you wanted to apply more than one option to it, you can then convert this into a dot options and then pass the lazy load inside the dot options. We can also specify specific columns to only be loaded from a query. So we can do this by saying load only inside of our options of whatever the column name is. And once you do this, it will not load the other columns unless you try to access them. So if we go back over to our models file and go back into our user table here, I have added a column of status that could be a string or none. And then I deleted and reran this file to go ahead and create the database with this change. So back into our app.py file, we have this query that's being executed. 
we get all the users that come back from this, and then we try to access the status that is not part of this load only. So whenever we go ahead and run this, we can see here that it is selecting the username, user ID from users. It's not selecting the user status. It does perform another query getting the status of this user based on the user we're trying to access, which comes back as none since in the code I have in the models, I didn't add anything to it. If you don't want the other values to be added at all, you can then add this raise load equals true and then go ahead and run it again. An error gets thrown since you don't want the other values to be accessed. This is essentially forcing all the other columns to be deferred loading. And you can apply this load only into the options inside of another relationship. And for this next example, I added this date time column of just date and allowing it to be nullable. So that way we don't have to add anything into it. But once we have that, you can delete the database and rerun it to apply the changes. And then we can go ahead and perform this query and we are join loading the user post and we're loading only the active status inside the post table. So we're not going to be getting that date field at all. But as soon as we try to access it here, it will perform another query. So whenever we go ahead and run this, we can see that happens right here. It is selecting all the data joining the table since we're doing a joined load. And we can see right here when it's accessing the post columns, it has the post active and the post ID. But as soon as we try to access this date value here, it then performs another query. It then performs another query right here, getting that date for this specific post, which comes back as none since I didn't add anything into it. And having this load only, if you wanted to load only multiple columns, you can add this dot options here and just apply the load only function inside the options. And if you want to load multiple columns, you just add a comma and whatever other column you want to add. So if you had a table with, let's say, 10 columns and you just put these two here, it will only load these two until you try to access the other ones. Or if you pass raise load equals true, then it throws an error. And so these options do allow for fine grained control over the loading behavior of SQL Alchemy's ORM relationships. By using these, developers can explicitly define how and when related data should be fetched, optimizing application performance and resource usage according to the specific needs of their application. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.